Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the top 10 best hyper growth stocks that you can buy right now. Of course, I'm going to be going over these companies because they are extremely popular in the investing community right now, and I'm going to give my educated opinion on them, as well as their price targets and price predictions among experts and professionals, on top of what these companies actually do. We'll be going through some of their finances and where I think their stock prices are going to be headed in the future. So for more videos just like this one, remember to go and smash that like button, subscribe if you are new if you want more videos on the best stocks to buy, and without further ado I say let's just jump into it. So of course we're going to start off with one of my favorite companies, which is a fintech company, which is none other than SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI. We have the current stock price of around $5.07, while experts believe the company should be worth anywhere between $6 to $11 per share, and of of course, that means for me, we're going to rate this as a buy rating. But what does this company actually do? Man, my handwriting is terrible today. Well, this company basically operates as a digital bank by giving their consumers an all-in-one inclusive digital app, which offers them a variety of different products and services regarding finance. For instance, they can have auto loan refinancing, mortgages, personal loans, student loan refinances, credit cards, debit cards, investing checking accounts, savings accounts, various banking options, and of course the mobile and desktop interfaces that we just mentioned earlier. Right now, this company is doing extremely well in terms of their quarterly financials, despite the negative macroeconomic environment, and we anticipate this will be a positive trend going into 2023, because when the student loan moratorium ends, this will increase their revenues even more on a quarterly basis. But year over year, they are growing at a revenue CAGR, or compounding annual growth rate, of 50 52.7%, which I think will pull back to around 40%, but still is absolutely phenomenal. And they're crushing it in terms of their overall revenue and earnings, which is why, again, we have a buy rating on this particular company. But this is only one of 10. Let's discuss the other companies on this list so you can engage with some of the hyper growth stocks that people are talking about right now. And our next company we're going to analyze, of course, is Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR, which is is a big data and analytics company that serves both commercial clients as well as government agencies. And this company is backed by none other than Peter Thiel, which is a huge investor that invested very early into companies like PayPal as well as Facebook. Currently, the PLTR stock price trades for $7.94, and analysts believe the company should be worth anywhere between $6 and $20. Considering the current macroeconomic environment and because the current company is still trading at a big premium, I would say it's best to hold this company as of right now until we get out of this negative macroeconomic environment as inflation continues to rise and the Fed increases interest rates to get it under control. The total revenue they're bringing in is only $1.542 billion as of 2021, which is substantially higher than their overall market cap, which is why I believe, according to their PS ratio, that the company could cool down even more. However, if we do compare this company to their peers in their same space, we can see that they're actually trading at a lot better accounting ratios than many of their peers, which is really good news. When we pop over to their overall financials, we can see that their revenues have actually dropped in the sense of they were supposed to be bringing in a 30% CAGR from now until the year of 2025, but recently management has reiterated that they do not anticipate that this year or next year is going to be favorable in terms of that 30% CAGR regarding their overall revenue, which is why we can see a 25% percent or around a 25 percent year over year change from now until 2025 which was a pretty big blow to the stock but overall palantir is still a very solid company but it just depends on how soon you want your returns and how long you're willing to invest into this particular company now i am flying through these various companies but that's because we have a lot of companies to cover the next company we're going to talk about is a firm holdings ticker symbol a f r m which trades for around nine 19 to 20 dollars normally but recently it's actually pulled back a pretty large amount to where it's trading at around 18 dollars and 43 cents per share and professionals believe this company should be worth anywhere between 15 dollars on the low end and 53 dollars on the high end so clearly this has divided multiple professionals in regards of where this company should be now for me personally i gravitate more toward a sell rating for this company because i believe it's currently worth or at least in the next 
12 months, around $15 per share. The current market cap is not very high. This is still a small cap company of only around $5.33 billion for their market valuation, and they're bringing in revenues of less than $1 billion of $870.5 million. So clearly we have some discrepancy between their current market cap and the revenues that they are bringing in, but this is still a lot better than a lot of other companies that trade at an insane PS ratio, which we will talk about later. Overall, their year-over-year -year revenue growth has been pretty solid, but their net income and diluted EPS as well as net profit margin have all been hit very hard. And that's because of the current macroeconomic environment, and I would just say to sell this company because this is a buy-now, pay-later company. It allows customers to buy a product and then pay off that debt that they have acquired from buying that product through a firm, and they also offer a few other financial products that are geared toward helping consumers finance various purchases. However, right now I'm not too impressed with this company at large, which is going to bring us to the next company we're going to dissect, which is Cloudflare Inc., ticker symbol NET, and I have a buy slash hold rating. Now, I personally do like this company for the reasons which I will dive into, but right now let's talk about the current stock price target among experts in this particular space. The current stock price is around $51.72. While experts believe the company should be trading between $62 and $200, which means we could infer from a professional standpoint that this could mean that the company is undervalued according to their 12-month price predictions. And here is where it gets dicey because it really depends on what type of investor you are, which will determine if you should buy or hold this particular company. So essentially, this is a company that operates a content delivery network, and they also operate as a DDoS migration company. They essentially act as a reverse proxy between a website's visitor and the Cloudflare customer's hosting provider. Now, if all this is gibberish to you, essentially, it's a global cloud services provider that delivers a range of various products and services to businesses in a plethora of different geographical locations, but let's look at their financials. So what I do like about their financials is that their year-over-year -year growth in terms of the revenue is above a 30% CAGR, coming in at 53.85%, which is insane. Now, Comparing their revenue to their overall market cap, at least their quarterly revenue, it's really not that impressive. So this company is trading at a rather high PS ratio, which is an accounting metric. And what I don't like about this company is their net income diluted EPS, which is their earnings per share, and their net profit margin. But in quarter two, they did beat on their earnings per share as well as their overall revenues for various forecasting metrics. So where do we stand? Well, it really depends on what type of investor you are for this company. If you really want a company with high growth prospects that is growing their overall revenue at an astounding rate of a CAGR of around 53.85%, this company is for you. However, if you're more risk averse, you're going to probably want to wait until their net income, diluted EPS, and their net profit margin keep up with their overall revenue on top of their overall revenues becoming closer to their overall market cap, which is pretty expensive. But again, it depends if you are a really solid growth investor and it depends on how much risk you want to take on for this particular company, but overall, I have no problem with Cloudflare. Moving right along here, we're going to talk about Snowflake, and right off the bat, I'm going to wait to purchase more Snowflake. Why? Because even though this company is growing extremely fast, the premium that it is trading at, particularly in regards to its price-to-sales ratio and its PS multiple, is absolutely insane, and I'll get into that in a minute. Snowflake, ticker symbol SNOW, currently trades for 167.54 cents per share. While analysts believe on the low end, the company should be trading at $125, and at the maximum end, we can see a $500 price target. For instance, this company is a cloud-based data storage company and analytics provider that has various analytics services, which is generally known as data as a service. So they are a data as a service provider, and they are extremely good at this their job. And what I mean by this is that they are scaling their revenue at an insane 82.68% year over year compounding annual growth rate, which is phenomenal. These are the types of companies you want to identify and get at the cheapest price point possible. And that's where I come in right here. So the revenue of only $1.219 billion does not compare to their overall market cap and market valuation that people believe the company is worth. I think this 
this market cap is way too high and it's going to hit their stock price extremely hard, particularly during the economic uncertainty that we are experiencing right now. I personally would not be shocked for the current stock price to fall at or below $125 per share, and if it does, that's when I will start to buy up this company, but in the meantime, I want to wait for this company's price to become lower so I can further capitalize on that insane compounding annual growth rate in terms of their overall revenue. Not to mention their net income, they could have some improvements as well as their EPS and net profit margin, but clearly these are not as bad as other companies. And that's why I think this company has a great future ahead of it, and that's why I am excited to own Snowflake, but again, I'm going to wait so I can add more to my overall portfolio. The next company we have on our list is CrowdStrike Holdings Inc., ticker symbol CRWD. Currently, the share price is $151.61 per share, and it has had an amazing run so far. Ever since it was listed on the public stock market, it has returned to investors 136.83%. Now, what I like about this is that this company is undervalued according to analysts because at minimum, the company should be trading at $179, which is a one-year price target, or at the highest price point, we could expect the company could be worth $385. And that's, of course, why I have a buy rating on this company, but not just that reason. I like the space that this company is in, which is the cybersecurity technology space. This is a cybersecurity technology company, and as more companies and various businesses businesses become digitalized, they are going to have to have greater defenses in the digital environment, which is where CrowdStrike Holding comes in. This company provides various securities, threat intelligence, and cyber attack response services, and this is going to be especially critical for companies that could be attacked by various other countries if the geopolitical climate gets even worse than it already is. On top of this, they are making great strides in terms of their overall net income and their net profit margin on top of a very solid compounding annual growth rate year over year of 58.47%, which is why this company is a buying opportunity in my particular regard. Now, the only thing that I would say is that, yes, the price to sales ratio is not as impressive as other companies on this list, but I actually think this company is somewhat undervalued right now, putting aside the PS ratio. A lot of their other financial metrics are doing extremely well, and I am overall bullish on this company company even during the current stock market environment. Now that doesn't mean that this company or other companies that I mentioned in this video will not continue to fall, but I believe that the companies that I have buy ratings on will bounce back and rebound with the overall market, but we just don't know when that is because I don't believe that people can consistently time the market. I would much rather invest into solid core businesses and have my portfolio grow with these businesses instead of trying to time the market, but I would love to hear your comments down down below for CrowdStrike. Now this gets into a somewhat controversial stock that I don't see eye to eye with a lot of other investors. So Upstart Holdings Inc, ticker symbol UPST, and of course I've changed my mind on a couple of these stocks as of late, but particularly during times of stock market uncertainty, I am even more uneased, which means I am not willing to take on unnecessary risk of any potential losses. Upstart Holdings essentially has developed an AI lending platform where artificial intelligence will determine if somebody is actually credible and could be potentially a loan borrower from a credit union and or a bank. That's why credit unions and banks use Upstart's AI and artificial intelligence technology to determine whether or not particular borrowers are fit to be lended to. And what I do like about this company is it's gravitating away from the traditional Fair Isaac FICO scoring system, which disqualifies and does not include include various types of borrowers, which banks and credit unions could be taking and or helping, which is going to be a win-win for both parties involved, both the lender as well as the borrower. So their AI technology actually has variables that are not included in the traditional FICO scoring system. So they are using non-traditional variables, many non-traditional variables to determine whether or not someone is likely or unlikely to default on their overall loan. So if this company works out in the long term and and the majority of businesses adopts this particular company, the sky is the limit for the overall stock price. However, I don't think the company is at that place right now, and I'm not sure if it will reach it in the future. But again, this is up to pure speculation. I would always recommend you do 
your own research on all of these companies, particularly Upstart. The current share price for the company is $23.15, while experts in this particular space believe it's worth anywhere between the range of $14 and $37 per share. Now, of course, because I am somewhat bearish on this company now, I think it's going to gravitate more toward that $14 price target for professionals. Now, what I do like about this company is that they have a very small PS ratio. Their price to sales multiple is not very high if we consider their revenue of $848.6 million for the year of 2021 to compare that to their market valuation of only $1.88 billion. And that's why I have a sell slash wait. So sell because I believe the current stock price is going to fall lower, but wait because I do think this company could potentially have potential. Why do I think that? Well, the problem with me is that I don't think they are growing the revenue quick enough or at least not enough to where it facilitates a buying opportunity in my personal opinion. I do think that it's somewhat overvalued right now if we compare this to other companies. I think there are other companies on the market that are going to be a better investing opportunity. I also want to say that this business model of their AI lending platform has not been refined yet. And what I mean by this is that their overall business has not engaged the overall economy during times of stock market and economic uncertainty and or a recession, a stock market crash, or just general FUD. And if we look at their stock price and how the company has been adapting to the current negative macroeconomic environment, they haven't been doing very well. Just look at their quarterly financials. In their net income, down 180%. Their EPS down 192%. Their net profit margin down 167%. Their EPS and revenue also missed in their last earnings report. So if we factor in all of these, this company is not a good stock to bet on during times of stock market uncertainty. And because I am a risk averse investor, that's why I'm leaning more to the sell side. But I do think this company could potentially have potential in the future, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. And in the meantime, that's where I sit with this particular company. The next company we're going to talk about is a favorite of mine in terms of risky hyper growth stocks, which is Zscaler, which I deem to be undervalued right now. Now, again, not to say that the company couldn't fall even lower in their stock price, but I do believe this is going to be one of the companies that are going to rebound. But I do like its overall prospects. Why? The revenue is growing at a CAGR, which is absolutely amazing, of 61.39% year over year. Their quarterly financials came in as expected, actually beating their EPS by 20% and the revenue by 4.10% in regard to the current forecasts that they were supposed to bring in. And even though the current macroeconomic environment is very negative right now, the net income and the EPS fell by less than 25%, which is very stomachable. Now, this could lead to further decreases in the overall stock price, but in essence, I think this company is a very good company just to have in your portfolio. Now, I'm not advocating for a giant allocation to this company or really any of the companies on this list, we should practice proper risk management. In the end, I think the stock price targets of $165 to $500 is fitting for this company and I do like Zscaler, ticker symbol ZS, which leads us to our last and final company that we will be analyzing on a very surface level. Remember, this is a very surface level. I just wanted to give you all my opinions on some of the hot growth stocks that are on the stock market right now, but one of my favorites on this list is actually Salesforce. Now, I say this company is one of my favorites, but I actually have a weight rating on this, which means that I believe the current stock price is going to continuously fall because the PS ratio on this company, again, is absolutely insane. I do believe the company will come down in their stock price because right now it's trading at $147.18 per share, and analysts believe the company is worth anywhere between $150 to $385, which could be argued that, yes, they see it as undervalued, but I don't. I still think it's trading at a premium and I think we could get this company at a better price. But I do like this company and I do have exposure to this company. The CAGR is not growing very quickly, only at around 21.77% in regards to their revenue and their other financial metrics are being hammered during this time of macroeconomic uncertainty, which is another reason why I believe this company's stock price is going to fall and hopefully knock down the market cap with it. Of course, when the stock price falls, that is 
is directly going to lower the overall market cap. And that's what I want to see in this company. I want to buy this company at a lower premium than it's operating right now. Essentially, Salesforce, if you didn't know, provides customer relationship management. It's focused on certain areas of a company such as sales, their customer service, and it even helps automate their various marketing endeavors. However, this is a full-fledged technology company that is very integrated in using overall cloud-based software, which I really like. They are the future in a sense, but right now it's just rather expensive. And even though I like the company, I have some exposure to the company, I would rather wait because I do believe it's trading at a higher premium than actually necessary. And I do believe I miscounted because number 10 is none other than Datadog. So this is going to be the 10th company that we are reviewing because I like Datadog and they are a company that provides a plethora of different services in terms of monitoring servers. They have databases, various tools and services for technology companies and they mainly operate through a software as a service business model which is a phenomenal business model. Their quarterly financial results and overall finances are absolutely amazing. Just look at all the green right here year over year and the recent quarterly financials have absolutely impressed investors and I do believe they deserve the current stock price of $80 per share and I think the share price is going to increase to somewhere between $104 and $188 according to various analysts. Now these particular price targets should be looked at more as guidances and not law. There is no guarantee that these are even going to come through to fruition and the stock price will be worth this. It could be a lot higher than these. It could be a lot lower to these because analysts are not really very reliable. I just want to give you some perspective on where this company could be in the next 12 months and Datadog definitely is one of my favorite companies on this particular list. We have a lot of great, fantastic growth and technology companies, but this is definitely in my top three, particularly in regards to their overall fundamentals, business model, and financials. So with that being said, that is going to cap out this video. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you are new, smash the like button for more videos just like this one, and I will see you in the next YT video.